Hello and welcome to Fair Isaac Tech Talk, where we discuss ideas and technology for decision management. I'm Darcy Sullivan of Fair Isaac, and today we're talking to Christopher Rents, Fair Isaac's Chief Information Officer, and we're asking him what part can IT play in helping to reduce the global climate crunch. Chris recently addressed this topic at an HP Software Universe conference. Here's a clip. And one thing that was talked about, and I don't have 10 things for green citizenship, um, but we came out to be a global citizen, and this became very, very important. And it came from the employees. It wasn't something that came down from on high, is what can we do? And these are some of the things that, I'll be honest, drove most of the employees crazy and put my name on, you know, whatever blog. We reduced the number of printers we have everywhere worldwide. We moved to four up print, and everybody put in requests for cheater glasses. Um, we put in um, pin code controls, so they have to pin code something before they print it off. Just by doing that in one annual year, we saved almost $300,000. That dumped out like $10,000 a quarter in just paper that was going out in the recycle bins that you know no one ever looked at. Um, then we sat down and looked at our data centers. What can we do with VM technologies? How are we reducing it? And uh, some of our employees really went into it. I mean, we figured out our carbon-based footprint. What are we giving up by collapsing this stuff down? What are the benefits that we're having in the environment? And it's just, our, it's just a part. It's not a big thing. It's not a marketing campaign. It's just part of it that you can take and get your staff involved in it. So when they don't like change, and they're worried about automation, they're worried about managed attrition, and they're worried about consolidation, it's one of those things that helps us get through that. It's not always easy, but it is there. Chris, at the HP conference, you talked about how Fair Isaac is reducing its carbon footprint. In a time of lean budgets, what made you decide to devote yourself and your team to working on the climate crunch? I think it was a, um, we built off of a number of um, projects that we have in place going on. So basically outside of site consolidation from our global footprint, um, leveraging new technology, and then on top of that, looking at what are the other capabilities we can do. So how can we leverage what we're doing from cost management, um, technology reductions, um, and then what are, what are the best things? So when you're rebuilding a data center and we're starting from a greenfield capability, we really took the opportunity to look at what type of technology we were going to use, how we were going to really leverage a lot of innovation. So virtualized capability, blade servers, um, reduction of you know, virtualized storage, virtualized workstations. It's really reducing your footprint, your demand on electricity, your demand on HVAC cooling capability, um, just the environmental components. So we really took that stance that it ran in parallel. So we have the budget management, just like all companies out there are doing, but we really looked at the technology that was in place, what was available to us, and then when we started to go down that path, we really started to say, how could we redesign what we were doing? Because it's a cultural shift for the company. As a Fair Isaac employee, I know about some of the hassles involved in, in changing the way that we print, but what type of benefits have we been able to see by doing this? Sure. On our printing um, format, basically every office that we had worldwide had multiple printers in it. And we're basically talking about large multifunctional printers. So they either printed, you know, they could do copy, they could do scanning, uh, they could do color. And what we looked at is sat back and said, well, how many pieces of paper are we printing a month? And then we also examined the amount of print that was being disposed of every month. So we looked at what we have in our shredder bins, what do we have in all of our, you know, that's being taken away and being thrown out as trash. And you would look at, you know, documents that had been printed that you knew that had not been really looked at because they were basically, oh, I made a mistake, I've got to go change something and reprint it. So basically we um, put together a process that reduced the number of printers that we had worldwide um, pretty close by about 50%. On top of that, we changed the printing format. So instead of allowing just single page print one side, we went to four up duplex which, you know, we've modified that, but originally started out with four up duplex. On top of that, we added a pin control. So that means that when you go to send something from your workstation to the print, you have to go to the printer and type in a pin to be able to print that. If you don't go after a specific period of time, the queues are purged. So we're not printing paper um, or reports that no one's going to pick up. 
So basically that's allowed us to reduce about 8 million pieces of paper. Chris, you talked about uh, working on the data centers, rebuilding the data centers. Can you tell me more about that? Give me a sense of the scope of our data centers and what kind of reduction we've been able to make there. Well, basically, Fair Isaac um, grew from organic growth and acquisition. And we had about 24 sites worldwide um, that had some hosted some type of technology. They weren't all full data centers. They could have just been network infrastructures that were there. So we looked at that over our, the last 24 months and came up with a plan that basically was going to reduce all that infrastructure down to four core sites. So we have two sites in the U.S. and two sites in the U.K. And over that period of time, we also looked at all the technology that we were going to use. So that removed you know 27 PBX systems you know centralized everything to MPLS and IPT on a worldwide basis then we went and looked at the processing capability so we could segregate production from development and then looking at the technology that was going to give us a lot more flexibility so we went instead of having single product standalone server infrastructures to a VM infrastructure so one of the things that allowed us to do is we've taken about 50 percent of our physical server base out of our mix so we're basically out uh, we've re removed about 25 2700 physical servers from that what that's providing us is we reduced our carbon footprint by about 50 percent and we've been tracking it so that's allowed us to really look at how much energy was being consumed in these other areas and what does that mean another part of that we allowed is a lot more flexibility to our employees so we're basically providing, we have a, uh, we've increased the number of home office users. We've put in a lot of technology that allow remote users. So our VPN structure, we have a lot of secured access points, but allows people to be much more flexible. And that also includes um, video conferencing. So we've launched a number of core office campus video conferencing systems using a very flexible capability. Chris, what other areas of our operation are you looking at? Um, one of the big things that we're doing is partnering with our facilities and service organizations. So as we look at our current buildings, um, what are some of the other things that we can do? So a lot of the things has to do with, you know, as we talked about, employees um, working from home. So really making them feel like they're a part of the company, because that's a very big issue with companies. So basically you end up putting people out on an island. Um, they, re they remote in, you know, they never really see anybody, they don't interact. So we've really put in a capability of, you know, expanding soft phones, which allows them to be part of a four-digit dialing so they, l they feel like they're a part of the company. Putting in the video, you know, expanding our video cameras, capability so that they can interact. So we're still working through that and deploying it, but those are a component. Then also looking at what is our footprint for our offices. So really bringing someone into saying, how are we going to configure the offices correctly um, to get as much densification out of them? looking at what technology is in there. So uh, our core campuses are Wi-Fi, so that allows us a lot more flexibility as to how we use our space. So that's allowing, so we're not hardwired into things. So we can get a lot more um, densification out of certain areas. On top of that is also looking at what are certain services that we don't want to be in anymore. So you know, how do we use a third party vendor so that we're borrowing and leveraging their capability? Because we've cut our global footprint from about 40,000 square feet down to about 16,000 square feet. We've cut our servers in about half, but we haven't reduced anything that we're doing. We haven't reduced any of our capability. And that allows us, you know, with centralization, using centralized tools, um, using the centralized infrastructure, um, basically provides the teams a lot more flexibility and also is keeping the teams very engaged because we're using state of the art capability. We're probably pushing a little bit on the um, cutting edge. That's today's Fair Isaac Tech Talk. Thanks for joining us. If you want to see the full video of Christopher Rents at the Software Universe Conference, you can Google Christopher Rents, that's R-E-N-C-E, -E, and H-P. We invite you to comment on this posting, subscribe to our podcast series, and watch more Tech Talk videos at fairisaac.com slash tech talk. It's a great place to learn how to advance your business's decision management. Thank <laughs> you.